everyone and welcome to the Project Cars 2 Formula C Championship where of course we will be racing around the Hockenheim ring today a classic classic track in the history of motorsport and I'm sure after what was a very exciting last round of the championship hopefully we are in for another thriller tonight but I'll quickly go through the championship standings before we start here with obviously Nemesis Racing taking the first race of um, the last round and then Ragno winning race two the championship standings are as follows we've got Nemesis Racing leading the championship on 65 points Chazars in second on 61 points Mercia Largo on 53 points in third Mark on 48 points in 4th, Ragno in 5th place on 47, Blizzard on 46 points in 6th, so from 4th to 6th, separated by 2, 3 points there, 2 points there, wow, so it's very close in the mid midfield, and then we go back a little bit to Galactic Skull in 7th, who is on 24 points, Beamer Black is on 19 points, Kadeshi is on 14 points, Kevin Jacobs is on, is on 13, and Altanovic is on 12, JFD is on 16 points, Danny Bin Lahar is on 13, and sadly Lord George won't, again won't be joining us here, um, and will remain on 0 points so far in the championship, as of course we've got our first few cars coming out on track, and we will stay on this track side camera. Um, of, of Nemesis Racing as um, he certainly will stay on board with the champ will stay trackside with the championship leader as he is expected to be one of the favourites for tonight's race here of course this first qualifying session and the first race is in dry conditions um, but then the second qualifying session and the um, the second race will be in mixed conditions, in random conditions. So that will certainly be exciting. As S SGT strikes, says, "Hey Hayden, and hello to you." Oh, was someone disconnected from the from the lobby here? Because we had nine just when I was checking before, but now we have eight. I'll try and see who that was. It looks like it's been VSR Blizzard who has um, disconnected or has left because I did see in the chat before him saying that he had to, he might only be able to um, do one race. So it might have been him having to go off, which is um, quite sadly, quite sad. Um, are you not driving? No, I, I am the, the commentator for the Formula C uh, League as we, as we are looking at Nemesis through turn one which is certainly a difficult corner certainly a, a lot more difficult to get right in the Formula 1 car in the, instead of in these Formula C cars but still a very difficult difficult corner nonetheless as now Nemesis comes on to the straight here at Hockenheim and heading down of course to the best op overtaking opportunity on the track which is the hairpin it looks like a fairly clean lap at the moment for the championship leader so we'll go on board with him now that's the right camera still getting a bit used to this that's for sure as Nemesis is about to start heading in to the stadium section of course certainly the most difficult part of this track that is for sure but it looks like he's been quite um, he's not really pushing hard at the moment it looks like he's just trying to get a lap on board as he goes through the Saks curve 
and now it's coming up to the final couple of corners as of course we're starting to get our few first lap times in which I will read out after Nemesis has completed this lap as he comes through the last corner what time is the championship leader going to set here it is going to be a 145.7 two tenths behind Mark who is currently on provisional pole oh and who's that ahead of Nemesis who is absolutely just spun into the wall there um, it might have been Merchilago there I don't know but anyway Mark is on, currently on pole with a 45.4 then Merchilago in third just just behind Nemesis then we've got Ragno in fourth so the top four separated by three tenths very close at the front which is what we like to see Chazza is 1.7 seconds off Mark on pole and then you've got Anil a further three seconds behind Galactic Skull in 13th who doesn't look like he's going to set another time and then JFD who has also not set time as he has invalidated his lap so will anyone be able to pull something special out of the bag on their last lap here to claim pole position we will ch we'll go on board with someone else here now we'll go on board with Murchilago he's coming through the last corner now will Murchilago be able to do anything about Mark and Nemesis's times ahead of him no he's improved slightly but he's still gonna be behind as Mark sets a 144.1 wow what a banging absolute lap time that is by Mark a superb lap but will Nemesis who I did say looked like to be going a little bit slowly and could improve a lot now let's see what he is going to be able to produce here is he going to be able to get anywhere near Mark no he only improves by two tenths of a second and it is Mark who has got pole position by a whopping 1.3 seconds what an absolutely stunning lap that is by Mark and then we have Nemesis of course in second wow that's quite an incredible lap time there by Mark we've got Murchilago in third Ragno in second and Altanovich in fifth Chazza in sixth and Galactic Skull in seventh with JFD uh, in last place so wow it's going to take some effort to stop Mark here today or well, certainly in this first race in the dry conditions as I see Danny Abin Lahar in the chats saying hi and I will of course say hello back to you there Danny good to see you joining us and thanks to everyone who is joining us at the moment as we are waiting on the grid we are just waiting for the lights and here we go we're about to get underway here in race one of round four of this championship and it is lights out and away we go it looks like Mark has got a good jump and looks like he will maintain his position leading into turn one is he yes indeed he is indeed he has um, maintained his lead but now will Merchilago Nemesis be able to challenge him down here into turn two no once again it looks like Mark is still well ahead but it looks like someone was trying to go around the outside of him there Merchilago indeed let's see if he will be able to do anything as it looks like we've lost another driver it looks like Anavel Analtanovic has disconnected from the session sadly so that's that's a bummer but we will now keep on this camera as it looks like Murchilago is going to have the inside. Oh, and it looks like there was a bit of contact there. It looks like someone's ploughed into the back of Mark. Oh, and there's been some more contact. Lots and lots of contact. And it looks like the big loser out of, that, out of that was Mark after there was some contact. Oh, and there's... Jeez, this is crazy, crazy racing. And it looks like Ragno has made it... made it the move stick there on Mark and is up into P3. This is exactly what Mark didn't want after he's taken pole by 1.3 seconds. But it looks like Ragno will be able to maintain this position. Or will Mark be able to cut underneath on the inside of him? Is, is he going to try and look to go around the outside at the Saks curve? No, it looks like Ragno has gone deep there. 
there might have been contact, but it certainly didn't look like it on my screen. Wow, what a chaotic start to this race we have had, but it is Nemesis who is going to take who's going to finish the first lap in the lead. N nearly a second ahead of Murchilago, followed by Mark, and then JFD, and then of course Chazza right up the bum of Ch of um of JFD there through turn one. Will Chazza be able to set up a move coming into the second corner and at the end of the straight potentially as it looks like we had Ragnar running a bit wide through that difficult turn one and it looks like Chazza has made the move down the inside there of JF JFD a good move there by Chazza and he is now up into P4 but it looks like JFD does have a penalty because he's got that red little thing next to his name so he's got a penalty of some sort does JFD there as we'll go on board with oh it looks like battle for the lead then was heating up as Nemesis and all oh, this contact there between Ch with Chazza and JFD as I've just seen in the background Murchilaga got very close in the timings there to Nemesis that's why I quickly went on board with him but uh, once again it looks like Chazza will maintain his fourth place over JFD as Ragno is certainly starting to close up on these two now after the, the battle that they have had over this past lap and a half and indeed it looks like Ragno now is starting to mount some pressure on JFD for fifth place but it looks like now more than ever oh and JFD has gone a bit wide and it looks like oh okay Ragno has not done the same thing and has absolutely pulled a brilliant move around the outside of the sax curve there on JFD and has moved himself up into P5 as we have lost another driver from the sessions. Now we only have six drivers, but there is still certainly plenty of action as we will now go on to the closest battle on track, and that is Marco Murchilago, as it looks like now Murchilago has gone wide and it has allowed Mark to go up into P2, and Mark's pace is certainly looking very, very good at this stage of the race, but let's see if Murchilaga will be able to do anything coming down into the hairpin about Mark's second place. It looks like he is going to be a bit too far back here, but who knows, who knows, he could dive it, but Murchilago, the experienced driver that he is on this game, decides not to, and Mark is still uh, comfortably in P2 there as it looks like we are having some more battling behind as it looks like Ragno is now starting to close up on Shazza of course these two had a great battle for um, for the win at the last round of the championship and it does look like Ragno has the pace over Chazza here at the moment um as they now head into the stadium section. Ragno, will he look to go for that move around the outside of the Saks curve as, as he's looked like the last couple of times he's gone through there? No. No, he hasn't been able to there. But wow, this is a this has been a quite an exciting start to this race as Mark has just made the gap under a second to Nemesis and Mark is absolutely flying. He is 1.7 seconds quicker than Nemesis on that previous lap as we'll now go on board with Mark as he is now right up behind the Italian trying to get these silly camera things to change right but we are trackside of course with Mark. Will he look to make a move on Nemesis? Oh, looks like there's been a bit of contact there. It looks like he had pushed Nemesis wide, but Mark, being the gentleman that he is, has indeed uh, stayed behind Nemesis there for uh, P2, but we'll go... Oh, has Mark got very close in the breaking zone there? I was about to say, as, we'll, as we might go on board with Chazza and Ragnar who is still battling behind us but no we will not do that actually 
as the battle for the lead is way is is more important as it looks like Mark is going to have a look around the outside as Nemesis goes defensive into the Sax curve and Mark is surely surely putting a, oh he's certainly putting a lot of pressure on Nemesis at the moment will Nemesis be able to handle the pressure as we now go on board with Mark through turn one which is where he gained a lot of time on the previous lap not so much there he's gained a little bit oh as Nemesis has gone a tad tad bit wide will Mark look to make the move down the inside into this corner no he's not but Nemesis has run a little little bit wide and surely this will give Mark the best opportunity he's had so far to make the move on the Italian will he look to make the move up <laughs> at the next hairpin sorry for that hiccup guys <laughs> will Mark make the move here into the hairpin Nemesis is going defensive but Mark is still going to go down the inside will Mark be able to get the job done it looks like he is going to be able to but Nemesis has got a beautiful beautiful cut back on and let's see what is going to happen here between the two it looks like Mark is has got the lead but will Nemesis make look to make a move up the inside it looks like he thinks better of it and has let Mark go Nemesis some, with some smart driving there didn't whisk risk whisk risk his front wing and has and that has promoted Mark into P1 after a brilliant move up the inside at the hairpin and it looks like he is building that gap to Nemesis already with already an 8 tenth of a second lead but we'll go on board with Chazza and Ragno as they're now side by side coming into the sax curve Ragno has got the inside line and it looks like or that might be the lag of course it looks like Ragno went in the gravel a little bit once again there you know can't really tell exactly what happens from these shots because of course these guys are in Europe I am in Australia so the lag is pretty bad um, but it certainly looks like Chazza will have to put up a very very good effort to hold Ragnar off as Ragnar has now been on Chazza's tail for quite some laps um, as Galactic Skull is saying my throttle was only going to be 60% Wow. Well, that's that's certainly not what you want at this track. So that's very unfortunate for Galactic Skull. And we have Danny saying, I can't believe I'm missing this race. By the way, I can only watch the stream when my girlfriend is not paying attention. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Dedication that is shown here by Danny. As, mm, I thought Mark might have been might have pulled away from Nemesis but looks like Nemesis is keeping Mark quite honest here staying within a second of Mark here at the moment but we'll once again go on board with Chazza and Ragno as they head into the stadium section it is Chazza ahead of Ragno at the moment in P4 but will Ragno go for his move up the inside or around the outside of the sax curve as he's been trying to do a whole race to everyone no no he hasn't been able to this time as Chazza maintains track position there but we'll now go on uh... right where are we this camera thing is so difficult to use as it looks like we've got a bit of a timing glitch there with um, Nemesis, so that's that's a bit annoying there. But it looks like Chazza is at the moment holding Ragno off as we've got four minutes left in this race. The uh, Galactic Skull is saying now in the chat, but I fixed it now, thankfully. Well, that is that is good news that you'll now be able to <laughs> race with uh, full throttle. I think, I think that might help, so that is very good, as Ragno is getting closer to Chazza here, will he be able to make the move at the hairpin as Chazza does go defensive into the corner, will Ragno be able to make anything happen, no it doesn't quite look like it, but Ragno 
does have a very good run out of that hairpin and will maybe and will try to make the move onto Chazza into the next corner. Chazza goes very defensive as Ragnar will now look to go around the outside. Is he going to be able to pull out the move? No, not quite. He gets stuck on that curb. And that is very well defended there by Chazza as he maintains P4 of this race. Very good defensive driving there by Chazza. He's certainly going to need to maintain that sort of driving to keep this P4. But this is certainly the, mo the closest battle on track as of course we only have six cars racing at the moment. And it looks like Mark is very comfortable in the lead as we see him going into turn two. But we'll quickly go back on board. I'll go back to Chazza and Ragno here. Just in case anything happened through turn one. But indeed there has been nothing that happened. So we will go back on board with Mark who has now got a comfortable two and a half second lead over um, Nemesis Racing here and then Nem further back is Murchiligo in third who is about five seconds off Nemesis and then further back of course we have Chazza and Ragna who have been battling seemingly all race long for this fourth place and it looks like Ragna isn't going to go down without a fight here for this P4. I'll tell you what, Ragno does seem to get a very good run out of that corner. But he is not as close as he was on the last lap to Chazza, that is for sure. But he got, ooh, he got a bit close there to Chazza in the braking zone, but will he be able to do anything coming into the stadium section? Or it looks like he may be able to make a move down the inside into the stadium section. No, no, too risky to go down the inside there, that's for sure. But coming into the sax curve is another matter where he's been trying to go around the outside of every driver. So far this race, will he be able to finally make the move stick? No, not quite, Chazza, with some, with some good defensive driving there. Not allowing Ragno the space there, but not pushing off the track at the same time. Clean, fair driving between these two as Ragno is now certainly putting the pressure on Chazar now as they head down into turn one of what will be the uh, the final lap of the race I believe depends how far Mark is of course up the road it's 13 seconds yeah so that should be the last lap of the race but we will now stay oh, I'm trying to get these cameras working but yeah it's a pain in the bump right here we go as we'll now go on board with Ragno down to the hairpin as he is gaining and gaining on Chazza but it looks like he will be too far back to make any move into the hairpin oh and saying that he's completely outbroken himself and hit the back of Chazza there well, I'll, just as I was saying, it looked like he was too far back. He absolutely sent it and hit the back of Chazza. So it looks like now that will mean that Chazza maintained P4. But now we'll go on board with Mark as he goes through the sax curve for the final time in this race. And it looks like everything is settled and calmed down behind us as this will be a very dominant, dominant display by Mark after a, a whopping lap to take pole position. And it is indeed Mark who wins round one of race one of round four of this round. Congratulations to Mark. That is a brilliant, brilliant drive. And he deserved that after his brilliant lap four pole position. As, of course, Nemesis finished second, Murchilago has finished third, Chazza has finished fourth ahead of Ragnar, who are battling all race long, and it is JFD who will finish in P6, as we are just waiting for him to come through the final corner now, as there we have it. And that is race one all wrapped up 
A dominant display there by Mark. Faster slap. The win and pole position for race one. But of course, of course, is going to be some different conditions more than likely as we have random weather selected for qualifying, for the second qualifying and race two tonight. So, of course, knowing this game, there will probably be, probably be some rain and some fog. So, be interesting to see if Mark can also maintain that dominance through um, those conditions, if we do have that, but it's good to see a couple of drivers join back after we only had, of course, six drivers. Well, it's only been a Galactic Skull join back so far. Hopefully there are some other drivers who can join back and not make just seven of, seven of us racing, because, of course, I am including that in that eight at the top of your screen. Yep, Danny's saying, what a battle between Ragnar and Chazza. Indeed, indeed, that was a very good battle um, between Chazza and Ragnar. Galactic Scale saying, heavy fog. Well, yep, I would not be surprised, and that will certainly make my job as a commentator a lot harder, as I won't be able to see much from the trackside cameras. Right, um... As we are waiting here, I will just take a short, short break. I'll be back in about 30 seconds, so I will leave you guys to it for a little moment here. And it looks like we are only going to have seven drivers for the second race at the Hockenheim Ring. A bit disappointing, but oh well, there's not much we can do about that. As a few of the drivers are readying up now. As of course, we are waiting for Nemesis to give us the green thumbs up. Wait, what, what's Galactic said here? Kevin is on the wrong game. <laughs> you see, is he on GT Sport or something? What's what's he doing? Well, Danny, that is something that you could do, lad. But I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yep. As of course, we are heading into our second qualifying session here with random weather which is the most important thing here this could throw who knows who could get pole oh he, he's on f1 kevin what are you doing lad you got to be racing in this on project cars 2 formula c come on mate disappointing by kevin there of course but oh well um right oh yes we are loading into the session and let's see what weather we have in store for the second qualifying session of round four and whoa it is dry what is this what is this this is scandalous how can it be dry i don't think i've ever seen this before dry on random weather wow so i think it looks like certainly the favorite for this session once again unless nemesis and the others massively improve the favorite for pole position here 
is Mark and of course Galactic Skull saying dry for now. Yes indeed, dry for now because who knows what can happen um, with the weather in the actual race itself. Of course it is good to see Galactic Skull back in the session after his um, throttle issues where he was only having 60% of his throttle which are certainly what, not what you need when you're trying to race a race car so it's good to see him joining meaning we'll have seven cars for this qualifying session and more than likely for the race unless we have some unfortunate disconnections as we are just waiting for Mark to start his lap. The expectations are heavily on Mark here, that's for sure. We are expecting him to take this pole after getting a pole by 1.3 seconds the last time out here as he is about to start his lap here as he heads down into turn one. We'll be able to keep it on the track out of the corner which is also easy to run wide through there and he's kept it on the track very nicely there indeed as I think we'll go on board here with Mark just for the better view instead of the trackside view uh, Ragno has invalidated his lap time hopefully he will have some more time remaining to set another lap otherwise that will that might mean Ragno starting 7th which is which won't be good for the Italian but we are now coming down into the hairpin with Mark as he has taken that hairpin very nicely indeed you don't really need to hit the apex for that corner so once again a very clean and very good lap so far here by Mark now will he be able to maintain it through the rest of the second sector and coming into the stadium section in a short moment as he heads through this tricky right hander where it's so so easy to run wide but he does a very good job of not doing that as we now do indeed head into the stadium section on board here with Mark our race one winner everything is looking clean and smooth here as he heads into the sax curve using using the track very well there is Mark and let's see as he heads into the penultimate corner very nicely taken, opening up that last corner to try and carry the maximum speed through the corner and on it to the start finish straight. What lap time is Mark going to set? It's going to be 144.5, so still some more time here for Mark to find compared to his um, first um, pole position, if, if I remember correctly. I actually can't remember what lap time is set. So I'll, I'll quickly go back in the stream and see what lap time he set. But it is currently Mark. Half a second ahead of Nemesis. 1.2 seconds ahead of Murchilago. 1.3 seconds ahead of Chazar. Oh, and it looks like Galactic Skull has left the session once more. So unfortunate for the Scott. So indeed, it looks like we're only going to be racing again with six. But JFD in 5th and then Ragno who had his lap time invalidated in 6th at the moment. Uh, now what lap time did... Did Mark set for his pole lap? A set at 144.1. So there is a little bit of time left for, on the table for Mark as he has got a car in front of him. So hopefully that car does not um, does not bother him in his final attempt here before the session will be over. And it certainly looks like another clean and fast lap here by Mark 
will he be able to improve on his lap time of a 144.5? He sits a 143.7. Oh my days. Mark, Mark, Mark. What are you doing? Oh, and it's Nemesis with a 146 point. Sorry, with a 143.6. Who has taken provisional pole position and it doesn't look like anyone else will be able to improve on that. Wow! I was not expecting that. Wow! What a lap time there by both Nemesis and Mark. Wow! A 143.6. That is absolutely rapid. Rapid, rapid. Oh, and as expected, we have the heavy, heavy rain. Now, this will add some fireworks to this race, that is for sure, because anyone can win now. Wow, what an important pole position Nemesis has taken there. With a spectacular lap to beat Mark's benchmark, which was a 143.799. Wow, what a lap, as we are now just about ready to get underway for this race and it is lights out and away we go and it looks like Nemesis has made a very good start there and is immediately covered off the inside down into turn one ahead of Mark and this looks like Mark is being challenged by Murchilago there and it looks like indeed Murchilago has been able to move up ahead of Mark no well it looks like it into turn one but out coming out of turn one Mark has been able to retake that position as it looks like Ragno has made a move there on Chazza, but it is getting chaotic here with Mark and Murchilago as I think it was Murchilago who ran a little bit wide, but Murchilago is now right up behind Mark. Will he will he look to make a move down the inside? No, but it looks like Mark has covered off the inside line. It looks like Murchilago is going to try and go around the outside and hey and he has done it. It looks like Murchilago has made the move stick. Oh, and there's been some contact. And Mark has come to an absolute standstill for whatever reason in the middle of the track. And that has cost Mark some huge amount of time. That is, it looks like Ragno and Murchilago are going side by side. And Ragno is now up into P2. Oh, but they're both gone off. As I'm sure there's going to be some heavy, heavy puddles out there on the track like we seen last time out. Wow, what a start to this race is Mark. With some, after some contact with someone, I don't know who it is. Oh, Murchilago has run wide there. And he is, oh, everyone is running wide here. Everyone is really struggling with these conditions as it looks like Mark is now up into P3 in front of Chester with a nice move up the inside of the Saks curve. But after what has been a chaotic start to this race, oh, never mind. I'll go back to Mark and Chazza, who was a, they look like they are battling it out here for that third position. But after a chaotic, chaotic lap one, it is Nemesis who leads from Ragno, who lead, who is ahead of Mark. Oh, and Chazza has gone down the inside of turn one very opportunistically there. It looks like Mark has run wide. Indeed, he has. And now that promotes Murchilago up into P4. Oh, this has not been a great start to the race for our previous race winner here in these heavy rain conditions here at the Hockenheim ring. This has not been a good start. Oh, and Mark with a lovely move up the inside of Murchilago there. But it looks like Murchilago is all up the back of Mark heading down once more into the hairpin. It looks like Mark is indeed going very, very defensive and it looks like Mer even though he did go defensive, Merchie Lager is going to have a look, a look up the inside and Mark is going to try and go around the outside of Merchie Lago. Will he be able to make that move stick? It does indeed. He's got the better run into the corner compared to Merchie Lago there. Oh, as JFD's had a moment in the background there. Wow, this is... Uh, Oh, and these drivers are getting all very, very close to each other. As I thought, Mark and Murchilago might have run into the back of Chazza there. But, wow, Nemesis with a four-second gap. Pretty much a four... Well, three and a half second. 
three second gap. Oh, what's happened to Nemesis? He might have gone in the gravel up ahead. I don't know. It was nearly a four second lead. Now it's three seconds. This has certainly been a very, very, very chaotic start to this race. As we have had the pole sitter drop dramatically down to P5 at one stage after his car got spun around and then stopped very weirdly in the middle of the track at the hairpin on the very first lap but he has now made up a couple of, he's made up one position on Merchilago and is in P4 and of course Mark was battling with Chazza for a little bit as Chazza did make a, a very um, ambitious and brilliant move up the inside as it looks like Ragno is now falling into the depths of Chazza Mark and Murchilago, so we are about to have a four-way battle for second place here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, as Mark and Chaz are getting very, very close behind Ragno here as the spray just starts out of nowhere as we are now on the run down to the hairpin. Mark has got the inside line here on Chazza. Will he be able to make the move up the inside of Chazza? Yes, it does look so. Chazza looks to go for a switch back, but I do not think that will work. As now Mark has promoted himself up in to P2, just behind Ragno. But I don't think this was quite over here with Chazza and Marcus. Chazza, will he look for a move up the inside? No, he definitely thinks better of it. As Ragno runs wider, he gets on the curb, and that, that should allow Mark and Chazza to go ahead of Ragno, a costly error there by Ragno, which has allowed Mark and Chazza to go ahead of Ragno for second and third place res respectively. Oh, and there's some cone collecting there in the background with Ragno and Merchilago. Oh, and Mark goes very defensive there into the sax curve. He maybe thought that Chazza was lining up a move there. Wow, we. This is our. This has certainly been a very exciting race thus far as we've got four cars separated by just a second as you can see in that picture right there but I need to have a bit of a water break. As Mark goes very wide there through the first corner and that should allow Chazza to have an opportunity here into turn two but Mark once again goes defensive he's going to make Chazza do all the work going around the outside to get past him and it does not look like that's worked out as we've had some more cone collecting jeez we love our cone collecting today guys don't we <laughs> but it looks like Mark after his little mistake into turn one there has so he's going to survive the onslaught of Chazza here and keep his second um, place. Oh, what's happened to Nemesis there? Looks like he might have had a little half spin. Oh no, he was just always oh, we've had some contact behind. And who's that? It's gone. Ragno is now somehow up into third place. There must have been, I don't know, Chazza might have made a mistake there. Sorry guys, I thought that the leader of the race had gone off track, but it didn't look like he had done so. But now we see Ragno and Murchilago in front of Chazza. As Chazza is making, no that's not even Chazza. Chazza's back here. As Murchilago, oh, this is absolutely ca this is chaotic. I don't even know which drivers are which. It doesn't help with the heavy spray that we are having at the moment. But oh, this chassis is getting right up the back there of Ragno. Looks like there might have been a little bit of contact. There's now this Murchilago who's in P3, and Chazza is near enough pushing Ragno through these last couple of corners. Will the Brit Matt try to make a move on the Italian down into turn one? like he did with Mark. No, not this time, but it does look like Ragnar is going to run wide and that is going to present Chazza with the opportunity to move up into P4. And that is a very comfortable move after that mistake there by Ragnar. To head up into P4. But now he will have to hunt down Murchilago 
who was behind both of these guys n not too long ago. But we have Mark closing in a little bit at the front on Nemesis. As, we, as we've seen, he closed the gap by 7 tenths of a second on that previous lap. As Chazza has all oh, with Lago has gone very wide there. He's gone off the track. And that might just allow Chazza to be able to get back into contact there with Lago. And indeed, it looks like now that will present Chazza with the opportunity to stay with Merchilago. Oh, as Merchilago has gone wide over the curbs, will this allow Chazza to go around the outside into this tricky right-hander? Oh, is he going to be able to do it? They're side by side. There's a little bit of contact as they now head into the stadium section. Side by side, Merchilago with the inside line, so he should be able to maintain and keep the corner there. But will Chazza be able to do anything about it going down into the sacks curve now? No, as it looks like Ragno is closer. Chazza must have hit a bit of water there. But now the gap is really closing up at the front. With Mark now just about two and a half seconds behind our race leader. Oh, as Ra Chazza and Ragno once again are getting very, very, very close. They have had some battle in these two races here at the Hockenheim Ring. As Chazza has run wide, and will that allow Ragno? But no, but Ragno has gone wide as well, so that will not allow. Oh, but Merchilago has even made a bigger mistake there, which I've not seen. Will Chazza's looking to make the move around the outside, but no, he's not being able to quite do it. As Chazza now is looking to go down the inside, no, not quite. But now we are heading down two wards. The hairpin as it looks like Chaz and Ragnar are side by side. And it looks like Chaz might just get stuck behind Murchilago here. But Murchilago has gone defensive on Ragnar and it's going to be nearly three wide down here into the hairpin. Oh, and it looks like there's been some contact there between Ragnar and Murchilago. It looks like Ragnar had hit Murchilago there. And that is going to allow Ragno in up into P3 after he was the one who made the contact in the first place. Oh, but never mind, Chaz and oh, this is absolutely chaotic. Chaz ran wide there. Oh, and it looks like there's been some more contact there between these drivers. Ragno and Murchilago looked like they they'd made more contact as Chaz goes around the outside of Murchilago there. A brilliant move there by Chaz after the con weird contact that Ragno and Murchilago had had. Just a couple of corners later, but it looks like Chazza had gone a bit wide there. And yes, oh, there's some more contact, more bumping as Murchilago is on the grass. As Chazza looks to go around the outside of the Sax curve, is he going to be able to make the move stick? No, not quite. Oh, has he still got the inside line, actually? Oh, what a brilliant move this will be by Chazza if he's able to make it stick. And yes, what a move that is by Chazza. A brilliant move around the outside of the Sachs curve and he's been able to maintain it through those last couple of corners in the stadium section to take P4 away from Murchilago. But they are side by side now into Turn 1 and all oh, Murchilago has now gone down the inside of Turn 1. Well, we, we are having some brilliant, brilliant racing here at the moment between these two and that that looks very weird it looks like Merchilago was going about two miles an hour on my screen there but it is Mark who is now starting to get closer and closer to Nemesis Racing here at the front he's now within two seconds of the Italian will Mark be able to mount the challenge in the last couple of minutes of this race as we of course have Murchilago and Chazza side by side but we have Chazza with the inside line. Murchilago trying to make the move stick around the outside and it is being quite comfortable there for Chazza to hold on to his position there but after that insane amount of battling with Murchilago and Chazza it looks like it has allowed Ragno to escape comfortably into P3 unless he makes a mistake he is going to have P3 all wrapped up as Chazza runs a little bit wide there. Didn't get on the curb, which didn't cost which would have cost him more time. 
but these two drivers are certainly very, very close on track. As you can see, JFD struggling there in the background. Wow. Well, but it looks like Mark now has indeed uh, dropped a little bit further back. I don't know if he's made a mistake on this lap. He more than likely has. So he's now about four seconds behind Nemesis at the front of this race. Yes, he's done a 149, where he's usually been in the 147. So a mistake there by Mark is looking like it's going to cost him any chance of of a second race win here tonight. But of course, we are on board. Well, we are trackside with Murchilago, who runs very wide, and it looks like it's almost got him a better run out of the corner than Shazza by going a million miles wide off of the track there. But this is, of course, the closest battle on track now. And will Murchilago be able to do anything on what will be the final lap of the race. It does, however, look like he is far, far back from Chaz and doesn't look like he will be able to do anything, at least into the hairpin. There's still a half a lap to go here. Mechilago still might be able to make a move here as it looks like he is just completely driven straight off the track there. <laughs> And look, from from our, from my view there, it just it didn't look like he made any effort at all to even stay on the track. Very, very odd indeed. But will Chaz be able to keep it on the track and off of that curb going into that corner? Yes, indeed. So that looks like that will be wrapped up. But now we'll go on board with our current race leader, Nemesis Racing, as he comes through the Saks curve for the final, final time. Now coming through the last couple of corners. Now coming through the penultimate corner. And now through the last corner. And it is going to be another race victory for the Italian. Who is going to extend his lead in the championship over the rest of the field. A brilliant, brilliant display in qualifying and race two by Nemesis. Who has won over Mark. And it looks like everything is settled down behind us. So what a performance there by Nemesis, beating Mark, taking that ridiculous pole position just over a tenth by Mark in qualifying, and then he's been able to replicate that in the race, winning by a couple of seconds over Mark, with Ragno in P3, who took advantage of Chazza and Murchilago squabbling over each other. Chazza in P4 after he had some brilliant battles with Ragno and Murchilago all race long seemingly and of course Murchilago in P5 and then JFD some of a ways back in P6 but what an exciting and enthralling battle we have had here at Hockenheim Sadly, we only had six drivers for both races after a few drivers had some issues. But this race, these races tonight, certainly didn't disappoint. And it has been the Italian nemesis who has extended his lead in the championship. Of course, the official championship standings will be released on the Nemesis Online Racing website in the coming days and on Twitter, of course. So keep your, your eyes peeled for those when they come out on Twitter and on the website. But a race win and a pole for both Mark and for Nemesis, as they were both brilliant in their displays tonight. But that concludes round four of the of the Project Cars 2 Formula C NORL Championship here. And it has been me, Niblo, here. And thank you once again, everyone, um, for coming along to this race. And I hope you all have a brilliant day, morning, night, wherever you are. And goodbye.